everybody it's another day at work except today I'm mildly annoyed so I don't know why I decided to turn on the camera because I am one moody biatch today <laughs> for starters there is no music in the store so I hope the customers like silence I can't figure out what's going on with the speaker but it's not working it's very temperamental. This has happened to me before, but I always end up winning. And today she won the battle because it's not working. So I've given up. Uh, the label maker is also fucked. Uh, the labels are printed like sideways and it, the information that I need to scan for customers is like cut off. And I've been tinkering with it for the past like 20 minutes, but now the store is open. Um, and it's still not working, so I've recruited my dad, so he should be here at some point to help me fix it, because I'm just not good with these things, and I'm just like, ugh. I know there's gonna be a bunch of orders, like book orders I'm gonna have to process, AKA put a label on them. So I'm like, ugh, why is nothing working today? Also, the fans weren't turning on, and I was about to be like, universe, what are you trying to do to me? You're testing me today. Uh, but they finally turned on, thank God, because if not, I was going to burn because it is a hot, hot day. Anywho, um, yes, I'm going to be reading Pew still if I get any reading done today because I suspect it's going to be a busy, busy day. Um, and yes, those are all the updates for this morning. <laughs> Hopefully my move improves as the day goes on. Fingers crossed. But um, yeah. It's rock and roll. All right. The first of many unboxings today. Can you tell? I love to sell braiding sweetgrass to anyone that walks through the door. <laughs> Fresh water because I added that to my list, like bookseller picks. So we had to order some of those. Finding the Mother Dree. I can't wait to read. So. Yeah, time to put these bad boys away. Oh, On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous is now out on paperback. Ha <laughs> This is typically how it goes. We get this, and this is like the master list of every book in the order, and this was kind of a long, or a big order, so I've got three pages. Um, and I just go through and I tick off all the books just in case um, the order is missing some books or you know, just to keep track of what we got. And then I'm gonna process this order on the computer. Then I'm gonna print out all the labels, which yes, I did end up fixing the label maker, thank God. And then I'm gonna label all them and then put them all away. But you already know the drill. So let's roll the montage. <laughs> sometimes we get a stack of books and the invoice appears to not show on like our receiving platform we use book manager so I have to manually scan each one and add them to the list um, so yes like I said a very delightful task but it's got to be done so here we go
my God, folks, we have made it. It is the end of the day. Um, I actually did manage to read a few chapters. They're really quite uh, short, very brief and digestible. So like it reads really fast and I am liking it so far. I am enjoying the story. I am very intrigued. It's a very peculiar book. Um, if you don't know the premise, or at least all I know so far is a, I want to say they're like little, they sound like they're little, but I don't know. Um, this person is found in a church pew in an unnamed small town and, um, they don't disclose any information to the like pastor or per person. I think it's the pastor. Um, tell me you're not religious without telling me you're not religious. <laughs> I think it's called the pastor. Anyways, um, he finds Pew. Well, he gives him Pew as a nickname because this person doesn't disclose anything about their information. They actually don't speak at all. Um, and so far, we've just been following Pew's interactions with several people that um, they've been interacting with in the town. And it's quite interesting how silence or giving people space to share things uh ends up being like a debriefing session for a lot of people i just found that interesting like this character hasn't said like mute and yet all these random people are disclosing so many interesting either like facts about them or secrets or um yeah it just kind of made me think that if we give people the space to talk or be good listeners and that often means like not interrupting or not saying like your opinion on certain things or whatever it is um can be kind of a really like fruitful and productive conversation even though one person's not saying anything i don't know why i thought of that but i just thought that was kind of interesting just like people's responses to silence um but anyways now i am off i am being bad because i I'm trying not to do this. However, hold on a minute. Um, I'm leaving with the book. I hate to say it, but I'm going home with Sharks in the Time of Saviors uh, by Kawhi Strong Washburn. I saw this, well, this came out a while ago and I was intrigued when I first saw it come into the store, but we just got another copy of it. But the main reason why I'm getting it is because Tammy from Tams Can Read, I believe that's her, uh, YouTube channel, which if you haven't seen her videos, check them out. I love her. She's very sweet. Anyways, she raved about this and completely sold me. So here we are. This is Tammy's fault. <laughs> I love how any new book I'm purchasing, I'm just blaming it on whatever person influenced me to get it. It's my coping mechanism, I guess. Anyways, I am off now. As you can tell, I'm in a slightly better mood. <laughs> I'm gonna go eat Indian food with my friend now, so I gotta get out of here. It's a new day. Uh, I'm gonna combine two work days. <laughs> because I don't think I got that much footage last time I was here. So here we are, it is a new day. I just got in, it is boiling hot. Oh my God. I also rode my bike. I've been riding my bike to work every single day and it feels so good. I'm like so energized and I get excited at the end of the day to like ride home because I feel very productive. Um, this is my little rider outfit. <laughs> Um, and yeah, uh, I hope that we sell a lot of books today. It's like I said, a gorgeous day. So I presume a lot of people will be out and about. Uh, I, for one, want to finish Pew so I can move on to the book I bought last time I was here per Tammy's recommendation. Oh, that's the computer turning on. And yes, we shall see where the day takes us. Um, we do have some book orders coming in today, so we have something fun to look forward to, some unboxing, <laughs> and yeah. All right, so 
as you know, I am reading Pew, but I don't think I have discussed what it is about. And considering that I'm 121 pages in, I figured right now is, is the time. <laughs> so uh, we follow, like I said, a young child in this unnamed small town and uh, a family takes them in and they don't say a word. So they're low-key mute. Um, <laughs> which is uncomfortable for everyone involved. But there is a, the small town and the peculiar cast of characters gives me very cultish vibes. Um, so there's no like indication yet. It, everything's like very subliminal, but they they just hint at something weird lurking in the shadows because they have, this community has a like festival at the end of the week. So this is all taking course. This, this entire book is like a week in the life of these people and this town that gets visited by this rando human, which they named Pew. Um, and it's like very religious, bordering on cultish. Like I said, I get more culty vibes than religious, like very like evangelical Christian vibe from the United States. I get more cultish vibes, but I guess those two can be synonymous. I don't know. Anyways, so uh, yes, Pew is very interesting, and Pew has a uh, very interesting relationship with their body and questioning why it is that we put so much emphasis in the physical body as opposed to what's inside, as well as um, questioning the like gender binary because everyone in this town is fixated on categorizing Pew as a female or a male uh, and they're just like literally who cares I'm so disassociated from my outside appearance that it's not even a point of like contention within Pew like they're just like I don't really care like I don't identify with my body I don't feel one way or another and I really like uh, what the author is doing in that sense like questioning the body and why we fixate on it so much when um, arguably it doesn't matter. Who cares? <laughs> like, it's just interesting because everybody in this town is like, oh, like we need to categorize you. We need to put you in a box and we're unable to do that because A, you don't want to tell us anything. Uh, you're going against the grain. Everybody in this town is like fake polite and like kind of creepy, honestly. And Pew's like, no, like you can talk to me all you want, but I'm my own self and I'm not telling you people shit. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. It's quite interesting. And uh, the story is good. However, what's keeping me reading is wanting to know what this cultish festival at the end of the week is all about because they just keep on like hyping it up. That, those are my thoughts so far, kind of rambly as per usual, and not very coherent as per usual, but um, I encourage you to pick it up. So we have finished Pew and it was a strange one. I must say the festival I thought was gonna be a little more wild and grotesque, but it ended up being, I mean, still weird, but less weird than I anticipated. Just like culty religious thing that happened. I'm not going to spoil it. You can read it to find out, but uh, I did like it. It was definitely a strange book, but I, um, and it sort of, it did not read like it. So I, I'm like hesitant to make this comparison, but I felt it was kind of like uh, Rachel Cusk's outline in the sense that it was just a bunch of conversations with people in the town that Pew um, participated in. That's kind of like the vibe of the book. It's just like conversation after conversation leading up to the creepy festival. Um, but yeah, I just loved this character's resistance to fit whatever narrative this very white right wing conservative town wanted them to fit into and their complete resistance to any like binary um, and yeah, it was since, um, we last spoke after the 120th page, whatever, uh, we actually get some like racial tension in this seemingly nicey nice town because an issue comes up 
uh, whether Pew is white or a person of color, and this becomes like a whole other issue. Anyways, very interesting. So it deals with plenty of very interesting themes, but in a very weird, unlike anything else I've ever read. <laughs> <laughs> but I liked it. I actually did like it. Definitely not what I was expecting, to be honest. Uh, but pleasant and surprising and interesting nonetheless. And it is quite a page turner because I was committed to figuring out what this festival was all about. And also, I like I said, I just kind of liked um, Pew's resistance to uh, what the people in the town were imposing of them and their discomfort and um, all the little like microaggressions towards Pew and other characters in the book. Cause like I said, it's like an interesting cast of folks other than just Pew, which is obviously the central figure. Um, and yeah, the ending was also kind of a mind bug too. <laughs> Pardon my language, but yeah, read it and let me know. It's definitely a wacky one. So if you're uh, in that kind of a mood, might be a book for you. Yeah. Anyway, I've been doing a lot of reading because the freaking label maker, I guess this is just like a continual issue <laughs> on this blog, but the label maker is now fully broken. So all the book orders I haven't been, been able to process because I can't print literally any of the labels. So I've just been stacking the boxes at the back and I guess the owner's gonna figure something out tomorrow. I don't know. So that's why I just kind of zipped through that book. No problem. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I'm going to move on to the uh, other one that I mentioned, Sharks in the Time of Saviors. And um, yes, I'm so excited about that book. I'm kind of ready for a family drama set in Hawaii. Love it. That sounds like the kind of thing I want to read now. <laughs> Something more traditional <laughs> in its like framework and composition. And yes, because I, I feel like that was quite like experimental. But anyway, yeah, that's my little mini review of Pew. I'm probably gonna have lunch now. I made some, my first homemade pesto, which turned out pretty delicious. So I'm gonna have lunch and we'll reconvene in a little bit. So our day has finally come to an end. I am boiling hot, so I have shed my initial layer. <laughs> um, I'm off to ride my bike. I'm gonna have some hot dogs. We're doing some grilling at my mom and dad, so we're gonna have some veggie dogs, which I haven't had in quite some time, so I'm looking forward to it. I did read like 20 pages of this bad boy and I am really enjoying it so far. It's got a very strong sense of place, which is exactly what I was in the mood for. Hawaii, here I come. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm not gonna prolong this vlog even more. So if you wanna know my thoughts on this bad boy, then stick around. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this random vlog of two work days. Kind of chaotic, but at least we're ending it on a good, happy, cheery note. Not how, not like how we started this, am I right? <laughs> so yes, I'll catch you on the flip side. Later.